Hello and welcome to Cross Life with your host, Pastor Bob Cornell. And Sharon Cornell. And we are so glad that you're joining us today. Uh, we have an exciting program today. We encourage you to watch the whole 30 minutes. But before we do so, we just want to let you know that we're the pastors <laughs> of Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you're anywhere within the Nashville, Murfreesboro area, we would love for you to come check us out. We're a church that's growing and on the move and God's doing great things. And again, we would love for you to check us out. You can check us out on our website, CornellMinistries.com. Also, Cornell Ministries on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Well, as I mentioned, we have a great program today. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. And today, honey, you're going to be dealing with how Jesus cares for us. Yes. And so take yes. it away. <laughs> awesome. Uh, he does, and we're so thankful that he does. So grateful that he cares about uh, not just uh, not just only our spiritual needs, though that those are the that is the most important of all. But he cares about our physical needs, our emotional needs, our mental needs, every capacity uh, of of our heart. He cares about our heart and our lives. And so, uh, again, I'll mention though that spiritual is the most important of all. He can touch us, and in just one moment, our hearts and lives are changed for all of eternity. No matter what's taking place in the natural, he can touch us and change us again for all of eternity, which is the most vital and the most important. So grateful for that. But uh, as it concerns the, this uh, topic that we're discussing here this morning, which will air later on when you're uh, maybe in the evening hours or the afternoon, whatever time you're watching it, Jesus is right there with you uh, and so grateful for that. And I believe he wants to minister to our hearts today and show us that he is near and that he is with us no matter what's going on in our hearts and lives, no matter what's going in our circumstances around us, our situations in our, in our daily life. He is with us. He's with us. So let's pray as we enter in and, uh, and break down his word and and open up our hearts to what he has for us today. So Father, we thank you right now, Lord, that we get to come in the name of Jesus, the sweetest name that we know. And Lord, we thank you for that promise that you are with us. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, you are with us and you're a very present help in time of trouble. And Lord, we thank you for that promise today. Lord, make your word known to our hearts and to our lives in Jesus' name. We'll be careful to give you all the glory. And everybody said, amen. Amen. And amen. Where we're uh, going to be reading from today is Mark chapter 5 and starting in verse 21. And really, we want to go all the way from 21 to uh, 43, though we won't read the entire passage. We'll take little excerpts from it. Uh, and in the middle of, of this passage, as we're talking about Jairus's daughter and how Jesus is going to come and he's going to touch her and he is going to change her life and her family's life. Uh, but as we're going to see and we'll, we'll read here in just a moment, there was a divine interruption on the way to Jairus his house. Uh, and before we get ahead of ourselves, I'll just read starting with verse 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. And verse 24, so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. And we see here in verses 25 through 34, as we mentioned a moment ago, that uh, divine interruption on the way to Jairus's house. The Bible tells us that Jesus went with him, but there was again, this divine interruption, which maybe Jairus didn't think it was so divine uh, at the time that he maybe thought, Lord, my daughter's at the point of death. I've, I've traveled all this way to come and see you face to face so that you could come and touch her, minister to her. Because I know if you, if you came and you touched her and you laid your hands upon her, even though she's at the point of death, she's going to live. She would live if you came and touched her. And we see again, this woman with the issue of blood that had this issue of blood for 12 years coming, though there's a great multitude. Jesus says, Hey, who touched me. 
Uh, and his disciple said, Master, you know, there, there's a ton of people around you. Everybody's touching you. But Jesus knew that virtue had come out of him because someone had faith enough to go and touch Jesus. And the Bible tells us that in that very moment that this, this little woman touched the hem of his garment, that immediately that that flow of blood that she had for 12 years that doctors couldn't cure, family couldn't help her with, she couldn't help herself with. But one touch from Jesus, one touch in reaching out to, to get a hold of him, he touched her. He touched her and uh, he again turned around and said, who touched me? And she was kind of afraid. She knew that, man, what I had going on for the last 12 years has now stopped. I touched him, he touched me, uh, and Jesus came to her and said, look, don't worry about it, I'm so thankful. I touched you, you touched me, and you are whole. Uh, but again, Jairus, who would have, would have witnessed this uh, amazing miracle, this great occurrence, I'm sure in his heart and mind was saying, I need you to get to my house, Jesus. Thankful that you touched this little lady. I'm thankful that you touched this woman that had this issue of blood for 12 years, but I need you to come to my house. And I believe there's many people today saying, Lord, I need you to come to my house. I'm thankful for what you're doing for my neighbor. I'm thankful for what you're doing uh, for the families at our church. I'm thankful for what you're doing for the people, maybe even on the street. But Jesus, I need you to come to my house. I need you to get to my house. And in verse 35. Can I just say something? Real oh, quick yes, that, please. That, you know, even though Jesus had a schedule, yeah. he was going to Jairus' house and he right. told him, I'm going to your house. Right. But yet he cared so much for this woman who was unexpected. It was an unexpected yes. interruption. Right. But yet, because he cared, he had compassion, yes. he yes. loved. Yes. And the same thing yeah. happens with in our life that right. that you know we're never we're, we are never an interruption for yeah. Jesus right our needs your needs that you have today it's never an interruption for Jesus yes. yeah he's Amen. got plans right <laughs> he has God. plans but your needs today are important to him because yeah. he cares for you right and it doesn't matter what is going on yes uh, you calling out to Jesus is never an interruption. Right. Jesus cares for you, he yes, loves you, yes, and yes. he will take whatever time is needed to meet your needs. Yes. And I, I just God. wanted to yeah. bring that in today. That this 100%. woman was, an, again, it was unplanned. Right. Unplanned right. interruption, right. but it wasn't for Jesus. Right. Because he loved her, he yeah. cared for her. Yeah. And the same thing ha applies to us. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Jesus is never too busy yes. for you. Amen. That's the reality. Uh, folk may be, people may be, but he is never, Hallelujah. ever too busy Praise for you God. to come uh, and proverbially knock on the door. He's he's willing and, and honestly, he's the one that sent the invitation for us to come. Uh, he sent that invitation out and you can, he's knocking on your heart's door in all reality and wants you to just come on and open it. If you've never accepted him before into your heart and life, all you've got to do is say, Lord, I'm opening the door, yeah. come on in. Uh, and he is not only willing, but w wants to, uh, is, is looking forward to that. And as a believer, as a believer, he's never too busy for you, just as he wasn't the moment you said yes to him, how many ever years long ago that was. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Uh, in verse 35 here, it picks up with, with uh, Jairus and, and Jesus going, uh, getting to his house. <clears throat> Excuse me. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further. Just to hear those words mm. from the people that were in the house mm. now coming to, to Jairus and telling him, your, your daughter's dead. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. It's over. Are, are, are there any other words that can, can, can conjure up fear or induce anxiety and panic and worry and concern, disappointment? Even depression, are there any other words that say, your daughter is dead? Mm. All hope is gone. 
all hope is gone, but I believe being in the presence of Jesus, all hope is not gone. It's not hopeless. There is always hope where Jesus is. Even if he's on the way, there is hope. There is always hope. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, because he knows our hearts, because he knows our frailty, because he knows humanity and is not intimidated by our humanity, Jesus said to Jairus, do not be afraid. <laughs> do not be afraid. That's the first words that he said to him upon hearing, your daughter's dead. Don't bother the master any longer. Jesus, Jesus said to him, do not be afraid. Wasn't the disciples that were speaking to Jairus, wasn't the folks on the way uh, from the house to where he was, but it was Jesus. And Jesus told him, do not be afraid. Don't fear. Do not fear. Only believe. Only believe. And as my husband mentioned a moment ago, Jesus is full of compassion, so full of compassion that he would stop for this little woman on the way to a miracle. He would stop for her and give her her own miracle. Jesus was not rebuking Jairus here for having fear in his heart. He knew that he had just got word that his daughter was dead, not passing away, but she had passed away. She was she was now dead and Jesus knew and knows the, the condition of our humanity. He knows our heart. He knows who we are and he knows our inclination to fear. And so he answered that fear, that trepidation that would have been in Jairus's heart. And he said, fear not, Jairus, fear not. You've got nothing to worry about. I'm coming to your house. <laughs> Jairus, you've got nothing to worry about. You know, what's awesome is that Jesus had heard this report. Mm -hmm. He had heard it. And, yes. and it says when he, when he heard the yeah. word, yeah. basically, again, it's over. Your daughter's dead, Jairus. Mm -hmm. It's over. And but he didn't believe. He didn't accept that that report. Yes, right. And right. Uh, we just, you know, I want to encourage you today that Jesus hears the report about you. Mm -hmm. He he hears the things that have been said. Maybe you're, you're you've uh, uh, reports that you've been hearing yeah. in your own spirit, or maybe right. that other people have told you, right. or the devils told you, or you're telling yourself that it's over. Right. But we we'll, we'll want to encourage you today that that. With Jesus, it's yeah. never over. Yes. It doesn't matter Thanks what God. the report is. Right. He doesn't accept that as done. Okay, no. it's finished. Yeah. He doesn't write you off. Right. He doesn't write your family off. Right. It's over. You might as well just give up. No, Jesus does not accept that report yeah. about you today. Right. Right. And and so I just want to encourage you today that it's not over. Yeah. He doesn't. He, God hasn't written you off. Right. Uh, Jesus says, as he said to Jerry, he says to us, mm -hmm. do not be afraid. Just believe. Yeah. Just trust me. Right. Right. And again, it wasn't a it wasn't a, a, a rebuke. It wasn't a harsh rebuke at all. It was comfort and, and consolation and compassion that he said, don't worry don't fear, I'm, I'm heading to your house. So not only do you not have to worry, but your entire family doesn't have to worry. Your entire family, that's your, your wife that is there with her now, she has nothing to worry about. Mm. Uh, you have nothing to worry about and your little one has nothing to worry about. Mm. Uh, they may not have seen it and known it and thank the Lord, we've got the testimony right here. We've got the scripture to prove it, but Jairus hadn't, hadn't read the book. Uh, he hadn't experienced that, uh, this experience has of yet. He was, the story was still being written, but he knew who to go to. He knew who to go to. And he didn't just get up and, and run when the folks came and told him that your daughter's dead and uh, don't trouble the master any longer. He said, I'm sure in his heart, though there was fear there, he said, Lord, who else am I going to go to? Who else am I going to, who else am I going to turn to? You're the only one that can help her now. Uh, you're the only one that could help her five minutes ago. And you're the only one that can help her now. Jesus truly is the only one that can help us. We can't even help ourselves. Uh, though I'm, I'm thankful that he gives us wisdom and direction and guidance, leading all those things. And he uses people, but it's Jesus. It is truly Jesus. And as we're going to see in a moment, he's going to get all the glory 
for doing what only he can do. And uh, verse 37, it says here, and he, Jesus, permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And I just want to interject this here. Peter, James, and John, they were a part of the inner circle of Jesus. Though he had 12 disciples, Peter, James, and John were the ones that were closest to him. And with John, uh, John the beloved, he would call himself, would be the act, the one that was ultimately closest to Jesus as he, we see in scripture, would lean his head against Jesus's chest and, and hear his heartbeat, that he would uh, get as close to Jesus as he could. And we can get as close to Jesus as we want to. We can get as close to Jesus. We can be a part of the crowd that's on the outside, or we can be a part of the 12 disciples that were close to him, part of the uh, the disciples that were, were very near to him and, and heard his teachings and loved him. Or we can be a part of the three, or we can be the one that desires more than anything else just to be with Jesus. You know, can uh, I just throw this in here yeah, real yeah. quick? That, you know, whom, whom we have relationships with yes. are so important. Mm -hmm. as, Jesus, as you bring out here, yeah. Jesus said, uh, Peter, James, and John, I want you to come with me. Yeah. Of course, all the disciples, they believe in Jesus, but they were the, the right. inner core. Yeah. And, and um, there is no clicks with Jesus. Right. But I want to just bring this out, that our relationships that we have, who we surround ourselves with, is so, so important. Yes. It's so important that we, that we are with people who will build up our faith right. rather than tear our faith down. Right. Right. Uh, and, and again, sometimes we can live in an environment in a home in which there's not an other believers there. Right. And God, know, God knows that. Yeah. But the, you know what? That's what church is for. Yeah. That's what gathering with other believers is for. Right. To be with other people that can build our faith right. up mm -hmm. versus tear our faith down. Right. And so that's what Jesus was doing here. Yes. And actually, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, it's but he put, Jesus would eventually put all the yes. doubt out of yes. the house. Yes. And so right. I'm sorry, yeah. getting ahead. No, Go that's ahead. good. That's, yeah. that's right where we were going. <laughs> that was a, an awesome uh, dovetail transitional statement going into where we are heading, which is when Jesus arrived at the house, there were, there were uh, folks there that were uh, weeping and wailing loudly. And in that time, in that day, they actually paid mourners to come and mourn and to, to weep and to make a show of, of someone passing away. And uh, when Jesus arrived at the house, these paid mourners were there and weeping and, and wailing loudly. And Jesus speaks to them and says, why are you making this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. <laughs> Woo, man, oh man. When Jesus says the child is not dead, your situation is not dead. It's just sleeping. She's just sleeping. Whoa, Jesus is getting ready to come and touch the thing that you thought was dead, to touch the person that you thought there was no more hope for, that maybe even you had written off. There is hope when Jesus arrives at the house. Amen. There is hope when Jesus comes to the house. And as we just mentioned, he's going to throw the doubt out. He's going to throw all the unbelief out. He told them, go ahead and go on somewhere else, I, I'm, I'm fixing to go touch her. Amen. I'm going to go and I'm going to touch her and she is going to be made every bit whole, every wit whole. And you know, they, they were getting ready for a burial yeah. where Jesus was getting ready for a revival. <laughs> Woohoo! And hear that Praise today. God. Don't don't bury the promise that yes. God's given Thank to you. you Lord. Don't right. bury the blessing that God's given yes. to you just because yeah. right. it seems like it's dead and over. Right. It's not over it's if not Jesus over. doesn't say it's over. Right. If Jesus is there and he is, yeah. get this. Thank you, Lord. He's not planning on a burial and a funeral. He's planning on a revival. Yes, yes, and yes. so expect Praise a God. revival, not a burial. Praise oh, God. get that today. Yeah. Expect a revival in your own life yes. today. Right now, today, yes. in this program, you, God Lord. can revive yes. you by Touch the power the of the Holy the Spirit. Of and you're Touch thinking, and the devil's whispering in your ear, yeah. oh, burial, you, funeral, Lord. it's over. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah. Jesus is saying, I'm going to revive you yes. and bring it back to Hallelujah. life. So don't yes. bury the promise and the blessing. Praise God. Expect a revival. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. When Jesus Jesus is 
things in the house, revival takes place. Amen. So thankful for that. So praise God. Don't expect a funeral. Don't think about the burial. Think about what we're going to do when Jesus comes and touches us and we are revived. When Jesus came and touched her, again, all the unbelievers, all the unbelief he had to throw out, uh, even if you're maybe in the camp of, a, of a, an unbeliever today, or you have unbelief as a believer in your heart, you can cry out to him and say, yes. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yes. Lord, I believe my, my daughter is dead. It, it's, it looks hopeless, but Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I want to expect revival yes. when you come. I want to expect and believe and trust you yes. to bring revival. He's worthy yes. of our trust today. He's worthy worthy of your trust today to simply just believe him. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside or and they ridiculed him, but when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child Mm. and those who were with him and entered in where the child was laying. As my husband mentioned a moment ago, you want to surround your people, you would surround yourself with folks of like-minded faith and like-minded belief. Amen. Those who are going to encourage your faith, those who are going to say, hey, I know she's dead. I know we got word that she's dead, but we're going to stand and we're going to believe with you. Jesus has come to your house. And again, there's not going to be a burial. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a revival taking place. And those who were with him and entered where the child was laying, verse 41, then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumai, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus says, little girl, I say to you, arise. Man, praise God. There's nothing hell can do. There's nothing mourners can do. There's nothing unbelief can do. You're coming back to life Amen. in the name of Jesus. You are coming back to life. He told her, little girl, I say to you, yes. arise. It was Jesus that was speaking to her. It's Jesus today that's speaking to your problem, to your situation, to your circumstance. Jesus is saying, little girl, I say to you, arise. And when Jesus says it, the Bible says here, Verse 42, immediately, immediately the little girl arose and walked. Mm, yeah. <laughs> she, she didn't stay in the bed. She knew that Jesus had just touched her. She knew that she came, she went from death to life and she got up out of the bed in the name of Jesus and she walked. Amen. And she walked, Hallelujah. praise God, and she walked. So he didn't just touch her and she sat up in the bed and said, thank you, Lord. She got up and proved he touched me. Yeah. Jesus just touched me, even though staying in the bed would have proved it too. She was now alive. Uh, he, the Bible tells us she arose immediately and she walked. She was 12 years of age and they were overcome with great amazement. They were overcome with great amazement. Have you ever just been in awe of what our God has done? Have you ever just been in awe of what Jesus has done in your own heart, in your own life, in the life of your family members, maybe in the life of your daughter or the life of your son or a grandchild or a niece, a nephew, a cousin, a, a parent? Have you ever just been in awe of Jesus coming into the house and resurrecting, reviving that which was dead, that which we thought was completely hopeless and a write-off. The world has written us off. The mourners written us off. But Jesus never writes us off. Amen. Jesus will never write you off. And you know what's awesome here is that Jesus spoke to the little girl and yeah. said, little girl, arise, get up. Yeah. Get up. And you know, mm. I, you know, sometimes the Lord does the same things, same thing with you and I. Right. He says, get up out of that 
yeah. out of that discouragement. Right. Get up out of that bed of yeah. whatever. You can just yes. put a label on it. Discouragement, depression, Despair. anxiety, right. fear, torment, right. whatever it is. Right. Get up out of it. Yes. I have healed you. Yes. I have made you whole. Yes. Jesus' death on the cross has given us victory. Yes. And he says to you, get up. Get yes. up out of that discouragement. Yes. And, and sometimes we can think, no, I can't. Right. I can't. But yes, you can. Yes. If Jesus says to you, arise, get up, then you can get up out of that bed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You Praise can God. get up out of it. It Praise doesn't God. matter what the yes, enemy Lord. says to you. It doesn't matter what, you, what you're what you saying to yourself yeah. or what other people are saying to you. If Jesus says, arise, yes. then you yes. can rise Hallelujah. up in the name of of Jesus. Yes, praise Hallelujah. God, praise God, praise God. And I know, you know, we're not saying uh, that we can do anything in and of ourselves, mm. but it was Jesus. Yes. It was Jesus. It was Jesus that spoke to her and said, little girl, I say to you, arise. You're not trusting in your own self. You're not trusting in your own works. You're not trusting in your religion. You're trusting in Jesus. You're trusting in Jesus, the one who does it all, praise God. And in verse 43, it says here, but he, Jesus, commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given her to eat. <laughs> Isn't he so good? Yeah. Something should be given to her to eat. He just did. He just performed a miracle. He just brought the dead to life. Yeah. And now he's giving them the practical application of walking it out. Go ahead and feed her. <laughs> Go ahead and feed her. And the idea is you feed her. You who just saw this miracle take place, you who just witnessed me say, little girl, arise, and she did, and she walked, go ahead and give her something to eat. Go ahead and feed her. He cares about our natural yes. life. Yes. As much as he does about our, our supernatural life, our spiritual life, yes. he cares about our natural life as well. And he, uh, again, it, it's, it kind of struck me funny when I first read this years ago and still does today, that he cares. Yeah. Not that that struck me funny, but he cared, said, give her something to eat. Yeah. Wow, Lord, you just performed this amazing miracle. Give her something to eat. You give her something to eat. You give her something to eat. You who are in my presence and watching this great miracle take place, feed her. Let her be taken care of. And I'm not sure the Bible doesn't say how many years after this she lived, but I believe she lived a long, 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 long life. Amen. When Jesus touches us, he wants us to be touched. And really the reality is he touches us. We're touched for all of eternity. If you need Jesus to come to your house today and perform a miracle, He's willing yes. and he is able. And we're going to believe with you for, for Jesus to touch whatever that thing may be that's dead to come back to life. And we're going to believe with you, trust him to do it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Arise. Amen. Jesus is still saying, little girl, arise. We love you all so, so much. We'll see you next time in Jesus name. Thanks for joining us today on Cross Life. Pastors Bob and Sharon would love to invite you to visit them at Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Service times are Sunday mornings at 1030 and Tuesday evenings at 7. For more information, be sure to visit CornellMinistries.com. Your gifts of support help make this program possible. Visit CornellMinistries.com slash online giving to donate today. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on Cross Life with Pastors Bob and Sharon Cornell.